Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. So we're at a very interesting point in the life cycle of the Nintendo Switch because it's been out long enough that there's a decent amount of games out there that you can now get for, you know, $20 or less. And so in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 Nintendo Switch games that you can pretty much find for $20 or less. And often they are in physical releases. Although obviously sometimes you can get even better deals if you're willing to go digitally. All right, let's take a look. We're gonna start with a game called Battle Chasers Night War. Now I wanna be clear, this game is not exclusive to the Switch. It's also available, I believe on the PC, PS4, uh, and also the Xbox One. But as you guys know, one of the big benefits of getting the Switch version is that you can play it portably. And so that's what a lot of these games are gonna be. This is a turn-based RPG based on a popular comic series. And in this game, you play as a group of adventurers that are trapped on this mysterious island. And then you go about interacting with some of the locals. You're trying to find out who the big baddie is. And ultimately, you're just trying to get off of this island. And the game has you traversing the overworld map to basically advance the story. There's also some combat there as well. Some, some enemies get in your way and you'll, you'll jump into a turn-based battle, which is gonna feel very familiar to fans of, you know, the 16-bit and 32-bit turn-based style, that sort of Final Fantasy style of combat. But then the game will zoom in to some of the dungeon-like areas. And this is where it becomes a little bit more Diablo-like, where it's an isometric view. And you do a little bit more of exploring, a little bit more puzzle solving, things like that. But as you see here, it's got some really great visuals and also some fantastic voice acting. And this is not a short game by any means. It's actually fairly long. It's gonna take you up to 30 hours to complete. So this is a very cool RPG, especially if you like turn-based combat. So definitely check it out. Next up is a game I never expected to see released on the Switch. That, of course, is the wonderful 101. So this game was originally released back in 2013 on the Nintendo Wii U, and it was developed by Platinum Games. They are the creator of the amazing Bayonetta series, as well as Nier Automata and also Astral Chain, among many more. And unfortunately, at the time, it was considered somewhat of a sales disappointment on the Wii U. So this was an attempt to you know, try to find a new audience for it on the Switch. The premise of this game is that you are one of 101 superheroes that can unite to create this kind of morph that can happen when there is a big group of you and create these kind of uber weapons to either give you an advantage in battle or help you solve puzzles or maybe even get through the level itself. And you do that by drawing certain shapes and letters. Now, you originally did this on the Wii U touchpad, but it also supports the analog stick. Although, in my opinion, it doesn't work quite as well. And on the Switch, these controls have been, they've been translated over to the Switch fairly well. Although, again, I'm not really a fan of using the thumbstick. I think playing this in portable mode using the touchscreen is by far the better way to go. That said, this is an incredibly hectic and hyperactive game that frankly just never lets up on the action for very long. And it's got some hilarious characters and presentation. It just doesn't take itself very seriously at all and definitely has some huge laughs in the story. So I'm very happy to see that it was brought over to the Switch and given an additional extra life. Next up is a game that is a bit of a surprise. It's called John Wick Hex. And this game basically serves up as a prequel to the movie series. And I absolutely love these movies. And in this game, you also play as John Wick. But what's really cool about this game is that it takes those kind of crazy choreographed shootouts from the movies and then slows them down to a turn-based strategic combat. In every turn, you can move John, reload your weapon, you can heal yourself, you can refocus your energy, or you can engage in combat. And you can do that either hand-to-hand -hand or with a weapon. And I've seen a lot of people compare this to games like, say, XCOM. And yeah, that's pretty accurate. Although this, this I think, feels like it goes faster than that, which is kind of, you know, on par with the movies as well. And so, yes, it's similar to the turn-based kind of combat and movement in XCOM, but it also has its own kind of vibe. And as a nice little touch that once you complete a level, you can then rewatch the entire level in real time, almost like it was a scene from the movies. It's, it's really cool.
Next up is a game I'm very excited to talk about. It is Star Wars Pinball, and it's made by Zen Studios, which is a company that knows a thing or two about video pinball. They've made dozens of great tables for a lot of licensed companies, including Marvel, Williams, uh, they've done Jurassic Park tables, Walking Dead, Aliens, Bethesda, and just a ton more. And this is a great collection because it comes with 19 tables covering most of the movies. Plus it's got some TV shows thrown in there like Clone Wars and also Star Wars Rebels. And they've even got some really cool theme tables in there that are dedicated to things like TIE Fighter versus Star Fighters, uh, Jedi versus Sith, and a bunch more. Oh yeah, and it even supports the flip grip so you can play the game in vertical mode. That's awesome. So if you like Star Wars, you like pinball, this is a must buy. Next up is a title that maybe you haven't heard of before that is Kaze and the Wild Masks. So this is 100% a 90 style 2D platforming game in the best possible way. In this game you play as Kaze, who's trying to save her friend from a curse, and it spans over 30 levels and it has an additional 50 bonus levels. So there's a lot of content here. And as you progress through the game, you acquire these wild masks, which give you additional powers from like say a lizard or a shark, a tiger, or even an eagle. And that kind of helps break up the gameplay and keep it interesting. And as you can see by this gameplay footage, it's just a truly beautiful pixel art game. And it also has some really solid controls and gameplay to boot. It's also not too long either. It clocks in around six hours to complete, which means it doesn't overstay its welcome. Now I get that there have been a ton of these type of games released over the last couple of years, but this really is a fun one. And I love the fact that it got a physical release. And like I said, for the most part, you can get it for 20 bucks or less. All right, next up I have two games. I have Darksiders 2 and 3. And you know, these games have been released on many different systems over the years. As a matter of fact, all three Darksiders games have been released on the Switch. However, the original Darksiders is a little bit over 20 bucks, so I wasn't gonna focus on that. Instead, I'm gonna highlight the second and third game, which is fine because, well, technically the second game is considered probably the best in the series, and when you can get it for under 20 bucks and physical, yeah, that rocks. Now, if you're not familiar with these games, they're basically action adventure games where you control Death, who is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And in this game, you're trying to clear your brother's reputation. He's been accused of a crime. And in doing so, you're also trying to resurrect humanity by traveling to the, the tree of life. So that's the plot of this game. It's not exactly the most original game. It may sound a little bit familiar, but that's okay because it's got it where it counts, the gameplay. And speaking of which, these games definitely play very similar to the early God of War games where you do a lot of fighting, kind of hack and slash style, but there's also a good amount of platforming and sort of puzzle solving, things like that. Plus you've got the edgy characters and plot. Now I do like this game though, because it's got some really great character designs, especially your main character, Death. He just looks badass. It's also got some great voice acting and some pretty decent graphics, especially, you know, on the Switch, right? The Switch isn't exactly that powerful. You can definitely tell this is a triple A title with some money and development behind it. And it's decently long too, at around 20 hours to complete the main story. And what of war? Would you kill your brother to save your precious balance? He is innocent. Are you so certain? Next up is a game that I was very excited to see was getting a remastered version that of course is Destroy All Humans. I originally played the first game back on the PlayStation 2 and I really loved it. But uh, this is an HD remake of that original game designed for modern consoles with a little bit better graphics as well as some motion capture for the characters during the cutscenes. So you'll notice a bit of a bump there in quality. And while the graphic updates are nice, the heart of this game is still a ton of fun. So in this game, you play as Crypto 137, which is an alien with a bad attitude that arrives on Earth basically during the 1950s. And his goal is to harvest human DNA that is needed to keep a species alive. So you're kind of playing the bad guy here, which is really fun. Now this is mostly an open world game that allows you to solve puzzles kind of however you want. You do a mix of using your alien weaponry as well as some of your psychic abilities. 
And it gives you a lot of tools to mess around with, including the ability to read minds. You can also disguise yourself as other humans so that you can blend in with them. Uh, you can levitate and pick up objects and a lot more. However, probably my favorite thing in this game is to hop into your spaceship, cruise around and just blow everything up in sight. That never gets old. Now, it's not a perfect game, but it's certainly fun and very memorable. It's hilarious. And honestly, for 20 bucks or less, yeah, you should definitely check it out. Next up is the Bioshock Collection. And this has a little bit of a caveat here. So basically it contains all three Bioshock games in this one collection. However, it's important to note that that game card is only 16 gigabytes in size, meaning that you have to still download another 30 gigabytes once you put it into your Switch. I know, that's incredibly annoying, but I just need to point it out. That said, when I first bought this, I was originally blown away that I was able to play these games portably, like on the Switch. It was, it was amazing. Also, they include in here all of the DLC, which at the time was considered some of the best DLC missions released pretty much for any game, and is certainly worth playing because they definitely tie into the main story in really cool ways. And when I got this, I went back and replayed Bioshock Infinite on the Switch, and again, I was blown away just how well it runs on the handheld. I mean, it was a joy to revisit. And again, there's just a ton of content included here. So with these collections, you're looking at over 40 hours of gameplay. So yes, it's annoying that not all the content is actually on that game card, but at you know 20 bucks or less, I do think it's still a good deal. All right, next up, you know me, I gotta have a racing game in here and Need for Speed Hot Pursuit is a good one. Again, another surprise when this was initially announced because typically EA does not go back and remaster many of these Need for Speed games. But what's cool is that this is considered by many, myself included, one of the last truly great Need for Speed games. So I'm so happy that they remastered this and brought it to modern consoles. And one of the reasons why this game is so good is because it was created by Criterion Games, which you will recognize as the makers of the Burnout series. And because of that, this definitely has a bit of a more arcadey feel to it than some of the newer kind of simulation style Need for Speed games. I also like how the locations and tracks are based on West Coast states like Washington, Oregon, and California, which I'm very familiar with, and it definitely gives it a lot of variety in those levels and the racing challenges. Another thing I like about this game is that the developer doesn't try to just wedge in some cheesy story into it. I mean, this is all about racing, both from the street racer perspective and also the police officer. That's it. And so I'm kind of hoping this game did fairly well because it would be cool for EA to go back and maybe try to remaster some of the other Need for Speed games. What do you think? And next up, another controversial one, especially on the Switch, that is Resident Evil, the Origins Collection. So let's talk about the positives here. So they take the original Resident Evil HD as well as Resident Evil Zero HD from the GameCube, and then they're bringing it over to the Switch. That's the good thing. Sadly though, only Resident Evil Zero is actually on that game card. So you'll need to download Resident Evil HD if you want to play that game. That is annoying as hell. And at the time, if I remember right, this game was sold full retail at $60, which rubbed a lot of Resident Evil fans the wrong way. You know, especially when you consider that one of the games isn't even on the card. And I guess that's why now, because you can get it at under $20, I feel like it's a good option if you want to play these games portably on the Switch. And you can do what I did, which was pick up the PS4 version, which has both games on a disc and is also under, you know, 20 bucks. So it's, it's not great. I hate it when companies do this. I wish they would just pay a little extra to get all the content on that actual card. Don't require downloads, but it is what it is. These are really fun to play. Um, they look great. There is some long load times, which is kind of annoying. So it's not a perfect collection, but again, when it's cheap, you can kind of make the call there. So anyways, guys, that is 10 Nintendo Switch games that you can find typically for $20 or less. Obviously thousands of Nintendo games have been released over the last couple of years, and this is by no means a, a complete list in any way. I probably could do 
two, three, four, five more of these videos. But I would love to know what you think down in the comments below. What games did you would like to see in future versions of this? As gamers and collectors, we're always looking for good deals. And so getting these games for, like I said, 20 bucks or less, man, that is a win for everybody. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.